please stand clear of the doors. Hey guys, I just checked my Disney experience. Yeah. Guess what? The wait time on Journey into Imagination with Figment is only like 30 minutes. We need to head over there right now and go on it. What? Oh, dude, let's do it. No, why would we do that? It's a waste of time. You have to go you have to go all the way over there. You have to get out. You have to go past the ball, which is what we would stop at anyways. Then we have to go all the way over the Figment ride, which is in the middle of nowhere by the land. Like, who goes over there anyway? Welcome to episode 105 of the Diz His Podcast. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Dan. Today we will be giving the his on Journey into Imagination with Figment. So, yep, we don't have Jen in this episode. She will be coming back in a couple of weeks. We're looking forward to kind of hearing about her Alani experience and how things went uh, over there in Hawaii. And, um, you know, next week we're going to have Jeff Davis. He's going to come on the show and he's actually going to... come on and be uh, a guest host. We're looking forward to having him on from DW60 on Sorcerer Radio. Yeah. Uh, But we're looking also looking forward to, you know, having Jen back here in a couple of weeks, having that female voice on the show. And today uh, we have Dane with us from Big Beautiful Disney. How are you doing today, Dane? Hey, hey, I'm back. You are back. And if you, if you, if you like me, good. Cause I'm back. If you didn't, (laughs) I don't care because I don't know who you are. <laughs> we we love you, Dane. We love you, Dane. And, Thank you know, you. we enjoy having you in our Discord chat. And, uh, uh, you know, Dane, you we have different opinions on some things. And I enjoy <laughs> hearing your opinions because I, me, sometimes and mostly I'm, on mostly on movies. Park stuff movie. are usually we usually agree, but movies were usually different. Yeah. And I'm overly, you know, kind of. I think I'm overly positive about things and I'm, I'm like, Oh yeah, it's good. It's great. Yeah. I'm you know? not. <laughs> yeah. You give me the, just, you give me the real deal, you know? And I yeah, love it. Just, I think that's just because of my nature. Cause I need, I, when you're critiquing things, you need to look at the bad stuff and, and stuff. Oh like yeah. That, but, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And if you like, you know, Dane, go ahead and check him out on YouTube, big, beautiful Disney, right? YouTube.com slash C slash big, beautiful Disney. Yeah, and uh, go ahead and check him out. Uh, subscribe, you know. Uh, go ahead and like like his videos or whatever on YouTube. Like all of them. Like all. Like of them. all of. <laughs> if you don't like them, like them. Yeah, like <laughs> all 105 episodes videos I've done. Just do yeah. it for fun. Or I will find you. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Alex? I said just do it for funsies. Yeah, just do it for funsies. But today we are going to dig into journey into imagination with Figment. Okay, which... so we're doing with Figment, right? Yes. Or yeah. the whole thing. We're doing the whole thing. Because Okay, and then that's a that's a big difference there because with Figment is only the two thousand two version. Right. But you have to go over the past in order to get to the present. Okay. Oh because I, I thought we were doing with Figment too, and then Joe started saying journey into imagination. I'm like now wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. So hold on. <laughs> well, Figment's my what it's probably my one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite Disney characters. You know, cool little dragon going as like a five-year-old boy. You know, that's really it really stuck with me. I love Figment growing up. I still love love Figment now. I have some Disney pins that are Figment. And so this this ride's cool for me. And I think one of the reasons because if you talk to really anyone, people this is not a very popular ro- attraction over at Epcot, nope. right? Journey into Imagination with Figment. No. It's not very popular. Not a popular attraction, but Figment is definitely a popular character. Exactly, right? So I think that if you are a fan of Figment, like you're gonna like you're gonna you're gonna go on this ride, in my opinion. So, but what do you guys? What do you think of it, Alex? Uh, I've never been on the ride. Only information I know about the ride in general was when doing the history. I mean, Chris a couple weeks back was like Journey into Imagination with Figment. I was like, okay, <laughs> what is that? And, and then Dane's like, let's do that. And I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah I, stole, I stole Chris's idea. I'm now sorry. i got to figure out what this is. <laughs> so I did some research into it. I mean, I honestly didn't know the ride was even there, to be honest. But doing some research, looking at some videos, definitely not up to Disney standards. You don't think so? No. Because no, it's not. What are you talking about? It's all about imagination. It's all about, you know, smells and senses. Disney's all about s- smells and senses. Yeah, right? but the ride itself is not that great. It's, I mean, it's all right. I mean, it's just like a slow moving ride that's, you know, not spectacular. It's not like a Soren. The technology's not like great and anything like that. But what do you think, Dane? How about you? 
It's it's gonna sound weird because I love the character. I don't like the ride. Really? How many times have you been on it? Oh my God, we went on it like five times the first trip. I I don't know. I've you went on it on. five times. Yeah, when I was younger, I liked it, but then when I got older, I was like, okay, this is. It's so it doesn't hold. Get... It's not special in your heart that you that, that you. I mean, Small the, World is not a very good ride, but I the, love Small World because I went on when I was ride, young. And I loved it. The ride isn't, but the character is because okay. the character represents imagination and stuff like that. The ride mm-hmm. is just a cheap open house, and doesn't fit. Doesn't isn't imaginative at all. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a rating, right? Uh, obviously, I guess you guys are going to give it a low rating. So uh, <laughs> let's go ahead, Dane. You want to give it a rating? Out of 10? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, five. Okay, so that's, lo- good. that's a good I, rating. Because I, I, like, I love the character. I really do. I love Figment. I have a Figment plush and a couple of Figment pins. Yes, and you uh-huh. posted, you sent a picture yeah. uh, of so Figment I holding truly, the Disney sticker. Truly, I truly love Figment, but the ride just needs work. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about you, Alex? You've never been on the actual ride, right, Alex? No, I've never been on the ride. And from what I've looked, I'm going to give it a four because of what it used to be wow, and what it is four. now. That's like your lowest rating. Oh, yeah. If, I, the, yeah. if the original ride was still here, easy 10. I don't know about okay. 10, but yeah, it'd be pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give it a six, right? Which is, you know, I feel like we're all kind of similar how we feel about it. I mean, Figment is really what does it. If Figment wasn't a part of that ride, I probably wouldn't. It, it it wouldn't be what it is, I think. So let's get to the his on journey into imagination with Figment. One little spark of inspiration is at the heart of all creation. Right at the start of everything that's new. One little spark amongst of Journey into imagination with Figment is a dark ride attraction at Epcot in Disney World. It originally opened as Journey into Imagination 1983. The ride followed the Dreamfinder and his pal Figment as they collected dreams and ideas to show the guests how anything is possible. This ride closed in 1998 and was changed to Journey into Your Imagination, which opened in 1999. This ride took out everything that made the previous ride a classic and is now known as one of the worst rides produced by Disney. It closed two years later and was changed to Journey into Imagination with Figment, which opened in 2002. Even though the name suggests it went back to its original form, it was more like Journey into Your Imagination, just received an overlay. So why do you think the original is better than this one? It's Because uh, everything's better the, in the original than this one? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's shorter. Simple answer. <laughs> it's shorter and the, um, we'll get into the history, but the mechanics that made the original ride what it was was taken apart which kind of ruined the the way the ride worked now it's just a slow dark ride before it had something special to it it had charm <laughs> i think it has charm on this one too you guys i mean, listen and i mean one of the great things about going to disney right think about this for a second is the smells yeah right when you're walking down main street you got those smells of like the bakery and all the different smells i can't smell what? joe okay <laughs> Sounds, <laughs> the sounds, yeah. sounds are a really uh-huh. important part of Disney, right? And in this yeah. ride, it kind of, uh, you know, you get to, ex- you get, you talk about the senses. Okay, you talk that's about the, the that's the five senses. What does that have to do with imagination? Everything it has everything to do with imagination, in my opinion. Well, I guess then the video wouldn't do it justice, right? The watching it on YouTube wouldn't do it justice, as you're saying. No, all five you're right. senses it are it interactive. Would, it would not. I mean, it's. I think this ride is on par with like Winnie the Pooh over at Magic Kingdom. It's not a good ride. Yeah, well, Winnie I the mean, Pooh isn't very good either. Well, I like that ride. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what you're you're doing here, Joe. You're, <laughs> <laughs> How about? Uh, I think it's on par. Listen, man. Right? I don't think it's. I don't think Peter Pan is that much better than this ride. Well, Peter Pan's and not Peter that great Pan's of a ride. Peter Pan's like crazy, huh? Peter Pan's not that great of a ride. Well, yeah, what well, like has it. like a, has like. Like a really super long wait every single yeah, time. It's we not go. That's not my fault. Peter Pan, Peter Pan is a good ride. I think I, in my opinion, if you compare the two, they hear me out for a second, okay? Mm, yeah. Peter Pan, you know, it's like a, what, a five minute ride or something like that. We we did an episode on it, right? Mm-hmm. Five minute ride. You know, I would. I've never seen Peter Pan lower than a sixty minute wait, <laughs> right? Yeah. I think Figment. I mean, I've never seen Figment over thirty minutes. I would rather go on Figment because it's like a thirty minute wait. You know, max. Yeah. You know, to go on mm-hmm. that. I I have 
I would rather go on Figment than Peter Pan because I'm not going to wait two hours to go on Peter Pan when I can wait 30 minutes to go on Figment. I mean, you have to switch parks, but yeah. True. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're right. <laughs> yeah, first you need to do like a... <laughs> How long would that take you from? <laughs> would the time be that, worth getting on the monorail and going? Yeah, to Yeah, I mean the monorail. The monorail. You save yourself like twenty minutes, maybe. Yeah, 10. if it's monorail <laughs> yellow, I mean you're looking at a good two hours there because it always breaks down. But uh... <laughs> in chat right now, so in our Discord chat, right, they're saying yeah. air conditioning. Oh yeah, right. This is a great yeah. ride to get out, get get in the AC and out of the heat. As I say, uh, uh, get it out of the heat and get off your feet. Yes. All right. Yeah, but this that's is one of those what the rides. theater that's what the theater beside it is for. Oh snap. Oh uh, yeah, the Pixar the Pixar short theater. I love that. <laughs> Dane, where, who was saying that they don't like those shorts? I love those shorts. Oh, I do. I love yeah, shorts. Yeah, I love those that shorts. That wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> Kodak was set to sponsor the pavilion directly south of the land, which would become the Journey into Imagination Pavilion in Epcot, which is now just called Imagination Pavilion. Disney chose legendary Imagineer Tony Baxter to head the design of Imagination Pavilion. Tony Baxter is best known for designing and overseeing the construction of Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, Star Tours, Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage, and overseeing the remodeling of Fantasyland. He pulled from many of his previous designs to inspire the look of the new pavilion. Previously, Baxter had created a land called Discovery Bay, which was approved to go around Big Thunder Mountain in Disneyland. This Jules Verne-inspired Victorian steampunk land was eventually shelved Due to Walt Disney Productions' Jewel Verne adaptation film, The Island on Top of the World, crumbling at the box office. After the success of Big Thunder in the late 70s, Baxter was chosen to design the Land Pavilion, but his design was changed when the Land sponsor switched to Kraft. He quickly got the job for Imagination Pavilion and used his Crystal Tower land design as inspiration for the Crystal Pyramid. The Imagination Pavilion would have three attractions, the main dark ride, the post show, and a film room. The film room would show 3D film Magic Journeys, and the post-show would become Image Works. The dark ride was inspired directly from a ride Baxter had created for Discovery Cove. The original ride was called Professor Marvel's Gallery, and would star Professor Marvel and his pet, a green dragon. The Carousel Theater attraction would have had the professor and his sidekick show you all their steampunk-themed inventions, as well as the professor's other amazing creatures. The new ride concept took Professor Marvel and changed him into the Dreamfinder. His sidekick, a green dragon, was transformed into Figment. Figment was an idea Baxter got while watching Magnum P.I. One of the characters said, what was it, a Figment? Baxter loved the idea of a creature designed with imagination. Tony and Imagineer legend X Intensio designed the creature together, taking the snout of a crocodile, horn of a steer, and adding in large yellow eyes, small wings, and gave it purple scaly skin with yellow spikes. So I kind of like that we go over the history of Figment here. A little bit, yeah. But uh, Tony Baxter here, he is a, a legend, a living legend. Oh, yeah. To be exact. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you ever look online and see his pictures of what he was going to make the land into, imagine those Disney, py- those pyramids that he made for Imagination Pavilion, and just imagine big t- crystal towers instead. Well, it's kind of like where the land is, right? Oh, but, oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying take the pyramids, but t- change it into towers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looked it looked crazy cool. And uh and he had this whole land designed and then it ended up getting the uh plug pool. <laughs> and of course, you know, people who like Disney, they take ideas from things they already created to make new things. The original ride was called Professor Marvel's Gallery, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of interesting because I mean I mean Marvel, I mean obviously Disney didn't kind of own Marvel <laughs> back then, right? But that's kind of no. cool to think of. It's kind of foreshadowing, huh? I yeah, guess. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of stretching, Joe. And, uh, I, I see where I see where you're coming from. I mean, Marvel, Marvel is a, a broad term, but uh, yeah, that is kind of funny how that, especially now because the Marvel stuff is going into Epcot. So. Oh yeah. And then yeah, again, but... you get a, a Jules Verne inspired thing the the everything is jules verd inspired in disney world it really makes me maybe i should actually read jules verne books epcot is jules verne inspired yeah (laughs) just everything in epcot yeah we got jules verne's epcot and joe roadie's animal kingdom yeah yeah uh but you know i uh what do you think why do you think figment is so special is i know the answer to this but i don't know how to put it into words his childlike wonder yeah for the world 
They described him as um, the fun of a kid's birthday party. That's his. That's his. Yeah. Uh, that's his personality. I mean, <laughs> he's 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 everything that Disney stands for, and then and then this is what I, I was. I was, I wanted to say this earlier last segment, but this is what makes me so mad about the current attraction is that they make him into a menace in the current attraction. They make him into like a like a pest. Mm. Oh, okay. really? So that's yeah. why I don't like this version because in the original he was Dreamfinder's creation. His Dreamfinder was so happy to create him. Yeah. And he made him he made him so so wonderful about so he made him how do i say this he made him like a nuisance no he didn't make him a nuisance they just he made him his kid i mean he's a he's he's a child and he's so he's i don't know how to say this because he made him he made him wonder about the world so much and imagination and creativity that he literally teaches him about those kind of stuff but in this new one they take that and then yeah, they, and they just, make him into a nuisance and destroy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. I, I agree with you, Rain. I think I, I hear what you're saying, and I uh, agree with you for sure. Yeah, when you said pest, I think that's the best way to put it. Pest. Yep. He's almost like you know, like thing one and thing two in Cat yeah. in a Hat. This pavilion was one of the last to start design and construction, and had to have at least one of its attractions available for Epcot's opening day. Journey into Imagination was rushed, but it ended up being Image Works that was finished in time for the park's opening. ImageWorks offered a pre-recording film studio area that would allow guests to act in pre-recorded film. The film options always star the Dreamfinder, who is actually played by Joe Rohde. Journey into Imagination would debut five months later, on March 5, 1983. Journey into Imagination was an omnimover ride that took you through different rooms representing art, literature, science, and the performing arts. These rooms had the Dreamfinder animatronic interacting with the scene, with Figment helping. This dark ride was well known for the beginning of the adventure, which had guests board Omnimovers and then enter a carousel-type room. Instead of the carousel turning, the Omnimover would lock in place and travel around the carousel along with an old man with a red beard, dressed in a blue suit and a top hat. He would introduce himself as a Dreamfinder while riding on his Dreammobile, which was used to catch dreams and ideas to create all sorts of things. There were five of these animatronics, which would travel around the carousel with the guests. A divider sectioned off the animatronics allowing guests to immerse themselves with the Dreamfinder they were traveling with. Soon, Figment would be created from the Dreamfinder's imagination. The Dreamfinder and Figment were both voiced by Billy Vardy. He would leave the carousel into the Dreamport to drop off ideas and dreams before setting off into the various rooms. Throughout the various rooms, Figment's wardrobe changed to fit the theme of the room. At the end of the ride, Dreamfinder tells Figment and the audience that imagination is the key unlocking the hidden wonders of the world. The final showroom has Figment surrounded by several movie screens of himself portraying different roles. You move on to the Dreamfinder, who is sitting behind a movie camera, telling guests to use their new spark of imagination. The ride ends, and guests exit into Image Works, the futuristic creative playground. Which is where the DVC area is at. Yep, upstairs. In the- yep, we can go up there if you're a DVC member. You can go up there and get snacks and drinks, and there's like computers up there. That'd be fun to do history on. Are uh, you shaking a lounge? Or, yeah, the lounge. There's not much DVC history lounge. there. Huh? It's too, yeah, it's too overlapping. It was Image Works, and now it's DVC. Uh, oh, is it? But hey, Image <laughs> uh, Image Works though. That's where the whole area is where you can do all those different games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah until they moved it. Yeah. What'd you say, Dane? It's now called the Image Works What If Labs. It's it's downstairs, and that's where the um, part of the original ride was. Hey, so let's talk about the Omni Movers, right? I love I love the Omni Movers. We you know there's so many rides that have the Omni Movers. I don't think we've mentioned this ride having the Omni Movers though before. No, no we haven't. I think we should really do a history on Omni Movers. I think I on, oh, I mean we've fun. we've talked about them a lot, um, but I think there's so many rides that have them, and you can talk about the different cars and how they're shaped and how they look and and omni the new rides like at ride at are those considered omni movers because the way they're shaped or no because they're uh that's free a good question roaming it's uh, a good no, question it's trackless yeah it's trackless so i guess it's not an omni mover right yes i think in my opinion you know i think an omni mover is pretty much just something 
when I think of Omni Mover, I think of something like an attraction that you can pretty much walk through. It's like you, it's just you sitting in something and it's taking you through something, mm-hmm. right? It's moving you through something. Right. And also it never stops like Spaceship Earth and stuff like that. Like the platform is moving. That's too. that's true. That's the Omni Mover is the platform is not stopping for you to get in. You have to merge onto it. Yeah, so Rise wouldn't okay. be that. Runaway wouldn't be that. And right, because we'll they Ratatouille. do come to a complete stop because, in order for you to avoid. I don't, I don't believe Runaway is going to be like that, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it is. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. It's, some, it's the one thing that's kind of is constantly moving, constantly. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. One thing about Figment mm. that really kind of bugs me is his, I don't like his voice. We just keep talking about Figment. <laughs> I know. Well, what? <laughs> so we just keep talking about Figment. Well, it's because Figment's the main part of this ride. Yeah, yeah, now it is. Yeah, now. Hmm. Don't, uh, oh, man. I, I think the ride needs some, needs some help, and the journey into your imagination is one of the, is the worst Disney attraction of all time. So it's going to. Yeah, we'll get into that one. <laughs> yeah. Even though Journey into Imagination was a hit among the guests, and the Dreamfinder and Figment became the unofficial mascots of Epcot, the ride ended up closing on October 10th, 1998. Disney wanted Kodak to put up the funds in order to update the ride. Kodak finally agreed, but could only put up a fraction of what Disney wanted. Journey into Imagination was closed, and in order to utilize the funds given, they decided to close down Image Works as well. This location was abandoned for some time, until eventually being changed into the DVC Vacation Club Lounge. At the beginning of the ride track became the new Image Works What If Labs, which cut the ride down by 35%. This change also had a great effect on the wonders of the ride itself since the famous carousel room was cut in half and now used as a boarding area. Journey into Your Imagination was greatly influenced by Honey and Shrunk the Audience. Eric Idle of Monty Python became the host and told you about the Imagination Scanner, which scanned guests upon departure for the ride and their arrival for the exit. This scan would originally tell you you have no imagination, and then by the end, you would have an overflow of ideas and dreams. A baffling decision made by Imagineers was to take out all Dreamfinder and Figment animatronics, which upset many guests. You ride through into a stream of visual and audio gags as you travel room to room. With the low budget, these rooms felt very carnival-like and did not live up to the Disney brand. In mid-2001, Kodak expressed how unhappy they were with their investment. Disney, trying to hold on to the investor, decided to pay the bill to try to restore the ride back to its former glory. On October 8, 2001, after only two years, Journey into Your Imagination was closed. Six months later, Journey into Imagination with Figment opened on June 2nd, 2002. Eric Idle came back to host a show. It featured many of the same sets from Journey into Your Imagination, but with Figment added into them, almost like an overlay. The grand finale had Eric Idle and Figment singing One Little Spark, the original song of Journey into Imagination. The final room has multiple Figments spread around, donning different outfits, paying homage to the original ride. I like that last room. Yeah. No, oh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about here. I want to talk about Dane's mm-hmm. why he's so angry about this, right? We're, we're going <laughs> yeah. to we're gonna dig a little deeper into it. Yeah. Uh, DVC Lounge, you've been there, right, Dane? Dude, it, it, oh, man. It's, it's, I haven't been to Top of the World, but it's, it's great. It, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And the, especially yeah. if you know what the image works used to be up there, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoy it because it's a nice place to go to kind of relax. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, can, you can hang out up there with your family you know mm-hmm. you can bring friends up there there's like pins up there you can trade pins when the, you the first Cheez-Its walk up and the, there's uh, the soda yeah and there's like you know so they have cookies too mm-hmm. and check dane said cheese it soda and they have yeah. like tablets and computers you know different areas so kids can go ahead and go on there and kind of and you, uh you can go, on there, go on the internet and stuff yeah and um alex said that it was abandoned until they put the dvc launch that's partially correct okay because what they did is they got the the dvc lounge they got rid of what was there but they walled off the dreamfinder school of art i think that's what it's called and the rainbow corridor and a couple of other things and in 2018 2018 i believe the rainbow corridor was taken out and dream finder i forget right now how that is but yeah that was abandoned yeah um speaking of river country when we did our river country episode uh where you we were talking about the urban explorers yeah mm-hmm. 
got back there too. Yeah, people have video of going back there. So, Dane, let's go. Let's go ahead and talk about. So, why is adding figment to this bad? Like, why is it bad? Your journey into imagination with yeah. Well, it's not bad, but the way they, the the way they portray him is bad because he's not he's not really a pest. It's supposed to be the imagination lounge, uh, not the the imagination lounge. It's supposed to be the ala- imagine imagination institute but they portray the thing that it symbolizes imagination as annoying so i don't know what kind of message you're trying to send Mm -hmm. and also the thing with journey into your imagination is they literally backhand the face they backhand the guests in the face yeah with the thing about you have no imagination (laughs) and at the end you find (laughs) how do you find imagination in this Terrible, terrible ride. Explain that to me, please. Daydreaming, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I guess so. You know, I, I mean, I probably have been on journey into imagination as a kid, and uh, I just don't. Just confused. Me. Yeah, this is all. You know, when you're a kid, and things are all it's like mixed together. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Quick fire, quick facts. Let's go. Journey into Imagination with Figment will be turning 20 next year. The Sherman Brothers wrote One Little Spark, the theme song for the attraction. But before they did, Robert Mullen wrote a song called Journey into Imagination, which was rejected. You can find a nod to DreamFinder during the Sound Lab. When entering, look at the office door with the name Dean Finder. Apparently, Figment was changed to purple because Kodak's biggest rival, Fujifilm, is associated with green. So purple was decided as a new color. There's a restroom inside the Imagination Pavilion that still plays the background music of the 1983 ride version, Journey into Imagination. At the time Figment was created, he was one of the first Disney characters ever to be created exclusively for a theme park attraction. The song One Little Spark has remained the theme song of the ride through all versions, but with slight differences such as new verses and current version. In 2010, Kodak ended its sponsorship with Disney. In the sight room, you will see a Mickey head on the dry erase board. Also, pay attention to the headphones on the table in the same room, and you will notice that there are Mickey ears on the headphones. When you are in one of the final scenes after the big blast, look at the A in action. You will notice a Mickey head in the snow capping the A. Never seen any of them, so. (laughs) I'm the wrong guy to be talking about the hidden Mickeys. Well, I've never done a ride, so don't ask me. We here at Diz His think Journey into Imagination looked and sounded like a cool ride. Disney screwed up big when they changed it to Journey into Your Imagination. Even the new Journey into Imagination with Figment can't make up for the closing of a would-be classic. Ever roll out of bed and feel like being a little bad? Three Cheeky Chicks Wax Company has you covered with their Villain Wax Melt line. The Sea Hag Melt will have you wanting to use that body language like Ursula with its bouquet of roses, lily, lilacs, and sweet violets with undernotes of musk. If you feel like you're going to have a meltdown like Hades, throw in the Wax Melt Ruler of the Underworld, which will fill your home with smells of lavender, rosemary, lemon verbena, cinnamon, coriander, leather, amber, and hints of smoke. Or if you just feel like you are just the evilest one of all, get yourself the Mistress of Evil Melt. These Maleficent-inspired melts will release a woodsy scent with its crisp pine needles, white fir, clove, patchouli, oak, and sugar pine. No matter how you're feeling, make sure to visit MagicallyScented.com to purchase a wide range of wax melts, candles, and room sprays, all made by three cheeky chicks. There are plenty of holiday sales that will allow you to buy any smell that fits your attitude. That's three cheeky chicks at MagicallyScented.com. I got a new memory song for you guys. Oh hey, my gosh. This go. is I made one this week for you, just for you, Dane. It's a wonderful day at the Disney parks. A wonderful day at the parks. I want to share my, I want to share my, I want to share my memories. I want to share mine. I want to share. That's mine. not bad, man. It's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> what made you come up with that? I don't know. It just popped in my head. I was like, that'll work. All right. So memories. I don't have a memory, of course, except for watching videos. And you know my opinion. Joe, you don't have any memories? Uh, you know, I just like, I, I wouldn't say I have a specific memory of going there. 
I guess the memory I do have is my son going with my son for the first time and uh, him ge- being kind of scared because there's, there's, there's definitely a couple of things in there that kind of pushes your, I wouldn't say pushes your senses to the max or anything like that, but mm-hmm. it gets real loud. Right. Right. And there's really, I would say. The blast still scares me. Yeah. And that's <laughs> like, I know, that's I know it's coming and I just get scared every time. Yeah. And that's pretty much what got him. And he was really scared, but now I don't think it bothers him. We we went on that not to, you know, before COVID and uh, he liked it. So that's pretty much my memory. I enjoy it. So, I mean, I would go on it. I wouldn't wait more than 30 minutes. I think that'll be a fun segment for us to do is what is the max you would wait on a ride. Right. So we steam a whole bunch of attractions. That's true. Can, that'd be fun. Yeah. I think that would be fun, I, but I wouldn't wait more than 30 minutes for this ride. Yeah. Uh, so definitely well, good next news time I go for you, it doesn't get above 30 minutes. <laughs> no, it, you're right. It does not get above 30 minutes. Definitely next time I go to Epcot, I think I'll ride this ride just so I can ride it and say I did. Ooh. Dane, you got any memories? Yes, I have a lot. I remember going on this as a little kid. I went on it like five times in the first first time I went to Disney. That's and a lot then, of times. Yeah, five times again in one trip. I I do love Figment. It's just the ride I have problems with. I, so I, I have a lot of memories, dude. I mean, when we went this past trip, I met a buddy in Epcot and we went on it together. I was recording the um, the blast <laughs> and there's nobody else on. It was like late at night. I think it was like near park close or something. And we went on it and the blast. I was recording it. There was nobody else near us. So we went ah <laughs> as loud as we could. Um when I was a little kid, I bought a uh, Figment plush, and that was like my only like purchase throughout the whole trip. One time, uh, Dang, man, for for you being so angry with this attraction, you have some good memories here. Yeah, dude. Again, I mean, I'm <laughs> fine with the. I I love the character Figment. I have great memories with the character Figment. It's just the way Disney treats him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess I guess that's it. Yeah. All right. I, a lot of That's, good memories on this ride. I think it's cool that you went on that ride five times. One of the when was it that you went on it? Two thousand seven and two thousand ten, I believe. I went on it about five times. That's pretty. I mean, I, you know, and I think it was in a row. Maybe not. And you, Steve is saying, like in Discord chat, you know, he's surprised that we gave it so such a low rating. Yeah. And you know, we are like the last two we have given low ratings. But you're at Disney, right? And when you're at Disney. It's going to be a 10, like the yeah. day is going to be a 10, no matter what. I mean, everything can't be perfect at those parks. Yeah. You're going to have experiences, but it's Disney. And yeah, it's, but the it's reason, still cool. The reason that I gave it, if I didn't love Figment so much, it would be like a two. <laughs> but the reason I do love Figment so much is just because I said it, I said it before, but it's just, I don't know. It's just the ride. It's just the way that Disney keeps calling him Epcot's mascot. And then they give him this and it i don't know it just rubs me the wrong way with the ride hey this is aj for the d plus club where we cover all things disney plus each week i'll bring you the latest news and rumors as well as what's new and coming soon to the disney streaming service in the us and in the uk each week we also have a weekly movie club for the weekly movie club between the 7th of june and the 13th we'll be featuring the 1973 animated film robin hood Share your thoughts in the Weekly Movie Club room in the Sorcerer Radio Discord at srsounds.com forward slash discord. And I'll feature some of your comments in this week's podcast. You can find the D Plus Club on all major podcasting platforms with new episodes every Sunday. See you soon. This is this is review. Review. Oh, so Robin Hood, right? So I, uh, that's pretty cool. I, I don't think my son has ever seen Robin Hood. So oh I'm really gosh. excited about watching Robin Hood with him. Uh, I really like this movie club thing we got going because last week was Coco. So Fun. we watched Coco together. Yeah. And tell um, me about it. I really enjoyed it. Right. And yeah. I really like this movie club thing because like Monday night comes along and we sit together and we watch the movie club movie together as a family, uh, which is cool. But I... Yeah, yeah. If I know you guys can't see it, but right now we're all on Zoom, right? We have some patrons in here. Dane's in here. Alex is in here. Alex, that's like one of your favorite movies is Robin Hood, correct? Yeah, I love that movie. And you know, it's funny is I was on No New Friends podcast and they asked me one of my favorite Disney movies and I blanked. I'm so bad at names and I'm bad at being on the spot. Uh-huh. So I said Princess and the Frog is one of my favorites, which I was totally just what? like, I mean, it's a good movie. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. up there yeah, like as Princess one of my favorite Princess movies for sure. 
And I just pulled it out. But that movie, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, not Robin Hood, Men in Tights, but Robin Hood, the cartoon. <laughs> Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Uh, that definitely is definitely Which is a good movie, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Yes, yeah, that's Oh, true. yeah, that's a great one. But the Robin Hood animation one is definitely one of my favorite Disney movies, no doubt. Yeah, so like on Zoom, you can see Alex get super excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, can't wait the next one to talk about it. But uh, I want to, so yeah, I watched Coco last week. The movie was Coco, so I watched Coco. Mm -hmm. And I, it's my first time watching it, and I really enjoyed it. It wasn't as sad as people said it was. It is yeah. sad, though. What, but, what you know, part's it's sad? The part where you sing to his daughter. Maybe because you have a son yeah. and I have a daughter, so it's different. Because yeah, that, I, scene, I got... that scene gave me the feels. And oh, I don't have feelings. Oh, you're talking about in the movie. Yes. Like when, uh, well, when, yeah. when his uncle, when his great grandfather sang to his daughter. The actor yeah, yeah. is talking, is, is singing to Coco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that definitely, that one hit me. And almost at the same age as the girl. So it was like. Yeah. I was like, why, why are you got this to me? Uh, uh, I thought, yeah, I thought it was a good movie, right? Uh -huh. I, I don't know if it was like a sad movie. But would you like rate it saying, as a really high movie? Like, would you watch it oh, over and over? Oh, yeah, man. I definitely great. think. What, are, what would I rate it? Uh, no, I'm saying the music's great. The, the music is great. Dude, there was a straight up twist in that movie. What's the twist? Dude, man, he was that, uh, the guy who was trying to look for was like the murderer. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, okay, I, yeah, I guess. I like, mean. Yeah, I just thought the other guy was gonna be his grandfather, you know, right? right. But then to see that guy was like the bad guy. Was... Yeah, that's that's one twist villain that that works. All these yeah. like the Hans, the Frozen, the Hans Frozen stuff. That, and, but the the uh, what's his name? Uh, the, uh, De La Cruz. That's that's one that actually that is good. Now, Joe, now you should go on to Disney Plus and watch the uh, Coco Live. Uh, the mu they play the music at the Bowl in L.A. Um, oh, they have, they have, it's on Disney yeah. Plus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, yeah. Well, they play I'm some songs in Spanish, some songs in English, and they uh -huh. just like play songs from the movie. Mm -hmm. But I, I like the movie. I like the animation. You know, Pixar. I definitely think that that, that can be a possibility to be in the three cabaret arrows. Oh yeah. The grand fiesta tour fits so well. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, what do you guys think of the movie? Did you guys watch it? I love it. I did. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. But you know, this week I'm really looking forward to watching Robin hood because my son hasn't watched it. Joey, you might have to get Joey. I know. I know Joey loves Robin hood. Oh yeah. Cause he has that memory with Robin uh -huh. hood. Yeah. Get him on the show. Talk about the memory. Watch a little Robin hood. Be good time. Do you need to go on a trip? Do you hate the hassle of organizing a vacation? Well, say Hakuna Matata and call Matthew over at Travel by Chewy. He is an expert who can arrange itineraries from a relaxing Hawaiian getaway to an exciting theme park adventure. The best part is his services are free. Call him at 507 261 9773. That was 507 261 9773. And just let him know Diz has sent you. Niels wants to know. Hey, Disney friends, a new question for you. And I would love to do it a little bit different this time. You know each other quite well, so guess the favorite Animal Kingdom attraction of the other two hosts. Write it down and then share your favorite one by one while the others show their guesses. Let's see who knows the other host best. You guys oh, Joe's know, know mine. Joe's, yeah. Joe knows mine. I know well, you guys know mine, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, so let's go. Why don't you guys take a guess on mine first? Okay, flight, flight, flight. flight of Passage. Yes, for sure. That It is Flight of Passage. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know Dane's, um, so I have to actually guess. Um, I'm not sure if I know you I've said it Dane. a thousand times, guys. River Journey? No, I'm just joking. No. Uh, <laughs> um, well, actually, no. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Everest? I think I know what it is. That's, that's, I think it's Everest, right? No. What is it? No, Everest is good. It's flight. Is well, it? Oh, flight's you, yours as well? Yep. Oh, oh, my gosh. You guys can go on it together. We can. Stand in two and a half hour line. I'm not waiting two would, and a half hours for that running. You would wait two and a half hours. Well, if Dane's going to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I would wait two and a half hours. Just bring snacks. Just bring snacks. Oh, yeah. We're going to bring snacks. So, so what's mine? Okay. Well, it's not flight. Definitely not. I think it's the safari. Yeah, probably. No, no, no. I know what it is. I know what it is. It's Everest. Oh, uh, it's Everest. Uh, yeah. You should know. I, I stop at Animal Kingdom just to ride Everest, and then I go to a different park. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Let's take a guess at uh, Neil's. Cause he's probably gonna go ahead and give us his, I would think, right? That's true, that's true. Uh, what is Neil's? Hmm. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's, uh, you know, he's he like roller coasters. He doesn't like roller coasters. Uh, it's, you know what, it's gonna be something weird like the, like the ants, what is it? Uh, that's a deep book. Yeah, no, I don't think that so. One. That's scary. It's not that one, I don't uh, think. I don't, for some reason. Ooh, yeah. Steve I guys. Lion King show is a good one. That's a great That's one. That's a really good guess. Yeah. If I didn't like Everest, that would be my second favorite. But I know Safari is good too. For some reason, I can see him liking Nemo, but I don't think that's going to be. Oh, Nemo is good too. <laughs> I'm going to go out there. I'm, I'm going to say Dinosaur. That's my guess. Locking it in. I'm going to say Safari. Dinosaur. Safari? No, I'm gonna wait. Alex. Yeah, Safari. I'm going I'm to go with uh, I'm gonna go with Dane and say Safari as well. My favorite is Flight of Passage. It was really immersive and I love the whole theming of Pandora. The ride is intense and the max I can personally handle. I had to close my eyes every now and then, but wow, what a flight. And talking about flights, I have a really good flight joke for you guys, but I think it might go over your head. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, oh man, I was getting ready for a joke. Oh man. Oh, so was I. He gets you with a hook. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we got three people fight a pass. I think that's. I think that would be the majority of people will say fight a passage is their favorite ride at Animal Kingdom. I mean, if it yeah. was a if it was a t five minute wait, or I could just walk on, it would be up there for sure. No, I, I, I'm kind of upset that you say that Lion King Festival, of the Lion King, is your number two, and not flight. It's because of the wait time. I'm I'm festival, not gonna spend. I mean, festival is a great show. Great really show. Is. Great show. But yeah, but it has nothing to do with the wait time, man. I'm talking about the attraction because you can get fast passes for Flight of Passage and skip the wait. But I don't do fast passes at Animal Kingdom because I'm never there for the whole day. But, but, but why not? I mean, we you go will in the future. We will in the future be there for a whole day, mm -hmm. but then we'll have the two kids. So yeah, because you can useful. go see all the animals and stuff like that. And they're gonna be they would they're gonna love seeing all the animals. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If I want to see animals, I'll just Google it. I think what was the max that you would wait for if if I flight because you know yeah flight like, like what was, what's the max you would wait hour an and hour half? yeah I would that, wait an hour and a half I, I wait an hour and a half for a roller coaster and I I would put up there with a roller coaster as the fun factor if if I'm like you know I kind of mentioned before like if I was going with Dane I would wait I would wait a long time to go with some like a, like a buddy that I haven't been I know with you would before. we waited three hours yeah what do you think Dane what's your max two and a half for flight uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, because there's so much to look look at. Yeah, when you're in the queue. So it would be it would be. It, it, I I feel it wouldn't feel like two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday evenings, join Joe and I along with Remy from Remy's Roundtable and Chris from the No New Friends podcast as we Twitch stream. The three of us join forces to bring you an hour and a half of good fun and games on Diz Journey. Find us on Twitch at DizHis65. But Alex, what did you do in the world of Disney slash news? So if you guys have been following along, I have been watching all of the Marvel movies in chronological order. And I don't remember where I left off last week. Does anyone remember where I left off last week? Civil War? Yeah. yeah. Civil War. Yeah. Civil, yeah. War. Civil, War. Civil War. So we've pumped our brakes a little bit. We haven't watched as many at night. Uh, my wife has been falling asleep because Civil War was a hard one for her to get through. She puts Civil War and um, Winter Soldier up there with Doctor Strange, which we are currently watching as the three worst Marvel movies so far. We've Whoa. watched uh, Spider-Man, like, Black Panther, and we're currently watching Doctor Strange. You don't like Doctor Strange? I actually do not like Doctor Strange. Um, oh, what? I like, I yeah, like I'm not a big fan of it. I don't know. It's just, it's not, it's magic, which I don't, I don't find all that twisting and yeah. non, like uh, the stuff, third eye stuff and the out of body experiences. I just don't find it that interesting and fascinating. See, now I love time travel. Right, you've you've heard me say this many times. I like times time travel show. too, but that's the whole. There's the whole thing about time travel and Doctor. Did you guys get? Did you guys finish Doctor Strange or no? I've seen it before. Okay, so at the very end, right yes. when he's sitting there trying to defeat the boss, and he's just, right, and he's just going back and back yeah, yeah, and yeah. over and over. That's cool. That's so cool. I love that stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Black Panther was awesome. I haven't watched yeah. it. I think that's my second, maybe third time watching it. Black Panther is a great movie. 
Yeah, it is. Um, and I can't wait for Thor Ragnarok, even <clears throat> though that's probably the one I've seen the most out of all the Marvel movies, Thor Ragnarok, because it's mm-hmm. one of my favorites. Well, that's that's it. That'll be another cool thing to kind of talk about. Uh, Dane, what Marvel movie have you seen the most, would you say? Because he's saying Thor Rag- Ragnarok. Oh, Which one have you watched so much? And yeah, Endgame. Endgame? Oh, yeah, because yeah, it's always on TNT or something, and we now, always watch it. Now, which Endgame. which Endgame? Because there's two of them, right? They're both named Endgame? Or Endgame. No? Infinity War oh, is that's the right. first one, and yeah, then Endgame right. is the second. Um, and then my other Disney new Disney this You guys don't want to hear mine? Well, I'm nope. not done with mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Guardians. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Your answer to what you've seen <laughs> yeah. the most. Which Guardians? I'm sorry. Guardians 2. Guardians 2, okay. That's a great one. <laughs> that is a good one. I love the intro of that movie. The intro is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then, so also this week, we've been watching a lot of Bluey. And uh, Bluey, if you guys know, that? I've talked about it in the past. Dane, I'm glad you asked that question because I love explaining it. Uh, Bluey is a kid's show based oh. around a family of dogs. And okay, they're like, yeah. they have, they're humanistic. And uh, it's just, it's a great family move show. Uh, they just released season two. It's Australian, so we had to wait for it to come out before we can uh, get it. And they're eight minute shorts, but of course, it's like you know, if you put three in one episode, that's an episode. So they released fifty two of them, and we were already on. I think we're up to like twenty four or twenty five, and it came out. I think it dropped on Monday, and we have been devouring that show. It's one of our favorites. Is it a is it a story behind it or no? No, no, okay. just a kids cartoon. Uh, the, the way they have the parents and the kids interact is awesome. The music is amazing and, uh, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Okay. Dane, how about you? Would you, oh, you go ahead, Dane. You want to go? Yeah. But no, no, you go for sure. I guess, Dane. What did you do in the Disney slash news? Dude, there was a lot that I did this week. I want to hear all about it, man. I watched Coco. I also watched the Spanish version of Coco on Disney+. Oh, really? Do you know Spanish? That's so much better. (laughs) <laughs> like for some reason it just adds another layer onto coco it's so much better do you than speak english. spanish name no i couldn't understand what they were saying <laughs> <laughs> no but i i know the movie so well that i yeah i you know i can tell i can i can kind of understand what they're saying but yeah <laughs> yeah but it, for some reason it, it's just so much better than the english version i don't know why <laughs> let's see i so i did so much that i i I forget what else I did. Oh, um, there was a bunch of news that came out this week. After you go, Joe, if you want me to tell you something about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and say, um, is, are you done with what you did in the world of Disney? or No. Oh, um, the video will be out by the time this comes out. I, I made, for this week's video, I did something called a Disney Parks Iceberg. So mm-hmm. this, when an iceberg is, it's a kind of ranking. And the tip of the iceberg is like general knowledge that everyone knows, like kind of like like fast passes or like the Disneyland cats, mm-hmm. just like basic knowledge that everyone knows. And then the the dar- the the more you go down, the less the less um, knowable, mm-hmm. if that's a word. Yeah. yeah. Um, mainstream. Yeah. Less mainstream it gets until like it's at the bottom where it's like, I don't know, Halix or something where nobody knows what it is. Mm-hmm. And right. It Helix. was. Yeah, it was fun. It was it was fun researching it. It's like gonna be like a twenty five minute video, so cool. <laughs> expect that on on Saturday after nice coming out on Tuesday. And is there like a theme or a topic that you're talking about, or is it just, just overall just, general yeah, knowledge just, stuff? Just Disney parks. So yeah. yeah, like an example of it in the beginning, it it has Disneyland cats that I say you know in nineteen fifty something, Walt found cats in Disneyland and he knew he couldn't kill him so he made him employees and now they go around and catch the mice and at the very end like the bottom of the iceberg it's like darker stuff a little bit so it's like michael eisner blackmail which he in 1987 he blackmailed mca because he didn't want them competing with disney so kind of interesting kind of an example okay that's gonna be a fun one to watch it, it was a fun one to make mm-hmm I just pictured Disney holding a cat, trying to strangle him. He's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't kill this cat. I just can't do it. We're going to have to hire these cats. I can't kill them. <laughs> oh, how could I forget this? Um, We got Polynesian for January. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yesterday, we, well, mom, uh, got on the computer, made reservations, got it for three nights, and uh, we're going to be staying Polynesian 
uh, monorail station view in January. Dane, cool. we are going, listen, we're going to have to go to the top of the world. If it's open, I it'll mean, it'll probably, it'll probably it'll be, be open, open by, by then. By then. So, That's a long, yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. it's, I feel like it's going to be open. Yeah. Well, I'm go- we're going to go up to the top of the world and I'm eating a seven, seven layer crunch cake that they have up there. I mean, if you're paying for it, absolutely. I mean, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I'm paying for yours. I'm paying for mine. <laughs> I'll split it because I'm not eating that whole cake. It's like feeds yeah, like four it's, people. It's huge. Yeah. Have you had it? Oh, no, you've never been there. I've, so how do you know if it's huge? How do you know it's huge if you've never been there? He does his research. He does oh, his I've research. Seen a picture of it. I mean, you want to know what I did in the world of Disney? Yeah, that's Let's it for it. me. Okay. Go I want to go. I watched Coco, which was fun. Yeah. You know, also watched Big Shot. Yeah. Uh, I liked I liked that. It was it was good. I, I think was it new this week? Yeah, it was a new one. Oh, I thought it was high season finale because I know Mighty Ducks. Yeah, had a Ducks finale. ended. The Ducks ended. Yeah, oh. and I liked it, man. Did you like it? I'm I'm behind on it. Okay, oh, I know Dane doesn't like it, it. Was it predictable? Did they win the championship? Whoa, spoilers! Hey, calm down, Dane. Listen, we know you don't like Mighty <laughs> Ducks, but I like it. Okay. No, did they? Sometimes did I they, like predictable. Did they win more than they should have? I can't spoil as it. As soon as they won Alex. two games, they won more than they should have. Yes, they weren't <laughs> supposed to win any games. Did they win one? Yes, Let's they be won. broad about yes, it. They, they won, won like they four, won. I think, in a row. Okay. They won, and it's okay. good. I love. Okay, I, you so know, I, I yeah. liked it. Okay. I liked the ending. I hope they go into season two, because I heard some kind of rumors <laughs> they're going to they have Keenan, <laughs> Keenan come on for season two. Yes, uh, that'll be awesome. Knuckle puck. Yes, big shots. I watched Bad Batch. You guys watch Bad Batch? I still have yet <laughs> no. to watch it. I still have yeah. watched it. In- can, can I give a little spoilers right now? Yeah, go ahead. No. Dude, they had the rancor. You know the ra- the rancor from Job of the Hunt. Oh yeah. Oh, he's want to listen. Didn't you say yes or no, Dane? Oh, oh no, you know what? J- Sorry, Dane. He didn't want to hear the spoilers. Okay. They so this is spoiler alert. I mean, so- I I don't know what I I'll don't, just cut I it don't out. watch Clone Wars, so I'm not really. Well, they okay. I'm not gonna give away the spoilers. Then. I'm gonna say that they made a lot of connections to the Star Wars series, like Job of the Hunt and stuff like that, and it was really cool making that connection. Um, so oh, Bad Batch okay. was really good, and that's pretty much it. I gotta watch Bad Batch. NBA oh, fun, NBA playoffs is killing. I forgot. My life I over. forgot to mention. I watched. Um, I reviewed Corella. Oh, oh yeah, um, yeah, you did. I won't. Yeah, I. If you've seen the video, you know I have some thoughts about it, so I won't go into it now. But I gave it a four out of ten. I didn't really like it. I have to watch. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, hey, it was. This is totally off topic. <laughs> you know, Steve's in chat talking about Keenan and Kel. Yeah. So do you see on Paramount? I think they're picking up a lot of old Nickelodeon stuff. Wouldn't that yeah. be awesome to see a Keenan yeah. and Kel they TV are show to be doing on Paramount? A and Kel show. On Paramount? I don't know where it is, but they're supposed to be doing a Keenan and Kel spinoff, I think. Oh, that's awesome. I, I heard. I think they're talking about it. But you know, they got a new Rugrats series coming on, so I'm kind of looking forward yeah, to watching that. With... Is that a, isn't that a movie? No, I don't think no. I think it's no. It's no. The Rugrats episodes. is new. Is a new series, and uh, the first. Uh, the first watch Carly. out! The first Carly. episode is 45 minutes. Dude, that that Rugrats animation that looks weird. That's how the new SpongeBob is too. And I know it's kind of like the the Toy Story thing, Toy Story Four thing, where Andy looks a little bit strange because it's not the animation that we're used to. But it, I don't know, just something about it is unsettling. Yeah, I don't like that much. They use the same thing for the new SpongeBob uh, Camp Coral. I mean, it's probably gonna be good. You can't judge it off of the animation. But I watched the first episode. It was all right. I think Paramount make a good move recreating some of these old. Uh, Nickelodeon cartoons. And yeah, yeah, on the, sure. yeah, I think that'd be really fun. Um, but okay, Disney got, I mean, not uh, Disney, Dane, <laughs> do you have some news for us? Yeah, really quick. Uh, there's not, there was, there wasn't really a lot that came out. Um, just some highlights. The Tusker House were reopened June 20th. Oh, cool. Um, face mask no longer required for select cast members at Disney. Um, all the cast members are vaccinated. Go ahead. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, journey of water construction goes vertical at Epcot. So they're building that, which is good. Which finally, uh, the, oh, did you see that the people mover is getting evacuated yes. all the time? Oh my yeah, gosh. Man. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> that's not good. How that, that ride's so easy. You just go and just go like it, it, nothing. It doesn't move. I mean, I mean, it moves in one straight thing, yeah. but I mean, why is that ride? So like complicated, complicated. I, yeah, it's old. No. Um, the tribal dancers oh. were removed from Jungle Cruise. What they do? And the, they, I think they attacked uh, some people on a ride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then one last thing on Jungle Cruise. This is this is last week, but the um the Trader Sam's gift shop was installed where the animatronic used to be. That's kind of cool. 
I wonder if they're, I'm, I I wonder if they're still going to tell the jokes oh. there. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're they're writing new jokes. Uh oh, this is huge news. Um, fully huge. vaccinated guests don't have to wear face masks at all at Universal, inside or out. Said so to show your papers. No, you don't. But this is a Disney no, podcast thing. Florida, Florida said no. Um, Dean, this is a Disney actually. podcast. <laughs> well, I don't care. That's huge for Disney because they're probably going to follow suit in the next couple of weeks. So. Yeah, I, I, you're right. I hear you. And I thought it was going to be a lot sooner. I thought they were going to do it like the next day. Yeah, I thought, I thought so gonna, too. Yeah. I thought they were going to announce it at ten o'clock a, a, in, at night and not let the cast members know again, but <sighs> they didn't this time. But hey, good Thank news. <laughs> Steve and Chat Dean, this is a Gatorland podcast. <laughs> we should do <laughs> a Gatorland do podcast. I love Gatorland. Maybe next year for April Fools, we'll do a Gatorland, and Steve uh, won't listen to that episode because yeah, he doesn't another, like another universal anything but Disney. <laughs> <laughs> um, Legoland. Oh, oh, Adventures Campus is opening up tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Soft open today. Oh my god, I wanted to talk about that Spider-Man animatronic, but we don't have time. Oh, dude, incredible. That's the his on Journey into Imagination with Figment. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Dane. Thanks for listening and have a magical week. Please follow us on all social media by searching Diz His 65 Share us and subscribe to our podcast to get the latest show when it is available. If you want to help us out, get tips, get your memories shared on the podcast, see pictures and videos of what we are up to at the parks, join our goof troop on Patreon.com and search for Diz His.